Hey guys, and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Now, over the last six or seven months or so, I've been selling nearly all of the synthesizers that we've been covering on the channel and that I've owned for the last year or so, but I've kept three of them. They're over here in the corner where I keep my synths in storage when I'm not using them just to keep the missus happy. I guess you guys that are married know exactly what I mean. So there's three synthesizers over here that I've kept. I'm gonna show you those in a second, but first I want to list for you the synthesizers that have come and gone during 2017. And I made a list of them. I was quite surprised myself how many there were. And I think you'll be surprised as well. And I'll tell you why I let them go. The Roland D50 has been sold to another synthesizer enthusiast here in Stockholm. I was quite happy to let that one go. It was playing up a little bit. It had a one output that was slightly hotter than the other, the left and the right, you know. Uh, some of the keys were starting to play up and I was getting a little bit worried about the longevity of that synthesizer. I'm not a collector, guys, so I, I had it for a little while, really enjoyed it. We paid tribute to it here on the channel and I was quite happy to pass it on to the next lucky owner. I also had a D20, which is one of the synthesizers I owned as a teenager. I loved experimenting with that one again, and we did quite a few videos on the channel as well. But I see no reason to keep that. That sounds kind of dated these days. But uh, a nice keyboard, very cheap, but nothing that I consider to be a keeper. What else? The Korg M1 has come and gone. Fabulous instrument, lovely to play, a fantastic instrument to behold, but not a keeper for me. And I am so impressed with the Korg Legacy Edition plugin, which has all of the sounds of the M1, plus all the expansion cards. I don't feel I need to have the hardware cluttering up the room anymore. Now, the DX7 and my DX7 Mark II, the DX7S, are both gone as well. The DX7 Mark II I don't miss at all, but the DX7, Part of me wishes that I had hung on to that because that is such a marvelous synthesizer. Of all the synths, the vintage synths I've had in the last year or so, that original brown DX7 with the industrial metal thick plating is built like a tank, like a pounder. Oh, that's one I really miss. I should have kept it because that's such a nice instrument to play. Just admire. But uh, the sounds are a bit boring these days, even though it has got those fabulous iconic presets and I can get the same signs with deck said so that's why I decided to sell it but part of me wishes I'd hung on to the DX7 so maybe I'll buy another one sometime in the future. The Korg Electribe has gone that overlapped a lot with one of the synthesizers that I decided to keep so we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future but the Korg Electribe reluctantly I sold that one but I wasn't using it very much so it had to go. We had a Nord Electro 2 for a while and my custom wooden dual manual case that I made for it. That's quite an old video, but that one was sold to a female prog rocker. So I feel like it went to a good home anyway. The Roland FA08, that went actually last year, but that was just a bit of a bigger and clunkier keyboard than I wanted. Maybe one day I'll get the FA6 or the FA7, which is slightly more compact, but Brilliant synthesizer, but I didn't really have a need for it, so I've sold it. We also had two keyboards that I borrowed, the Motif XF and the Nord Stage 2. They've both gone back to their rightful owners. The Korg Wave Station we've done heaps of recently on the channel. Oh my gosh, that is probably the most fabulous sounding synthesizer I've ever owned. Just, even though it's 30 years old, just the warmth and the lushness and the most interesting sounds of those evolving pads. This blows me away. Totally loved it. That's sold, sort of. It's over there in the case. By the time this video goes live, it'll probably be sold because I've been enjoying it now for a few months. But going ahead, I think I can make do with the sounds of the VST plugin version. Again, it's much more convenient. It's got much more sounds available to me. And it sounds close enough for me as well. So the WaveStation hardware is gone. My Atari 520ST is gone as well. That was a fun experiment, but a bit of a pain in the neck. So happy to see that go to another collector. And in the future, I'm going to do some videos showing how you emulate the Atari 520 on your PC. So 
We're not done with the Atari, but the hardware has gone. We had a Nord drum for a little while with the bass pedal and the pads and everything. That was fun, but didn't quite tick all the boxes for me. I did like the sounds, so maybe in the future I'll pick up a Nord drum one module. You can get those for about 100 bucks, quite cheap. Just the module, the sound generation things. I do like the sound engine on that. Or perhaps a better option might be this Teenage Engineering PO32 Tonic drum calculator thing because that's got the great sounds very similar to the Nord drum but more of them and a sequencer as well so you can actually build your patterns which you can't do on the Nord drum which is a bit of a shame so that one's come and gone we had a Moog sub fatty I hope you've seen my bark and classical music videos that we did there on the channel so the sort of Wendy Carlos style stuff I enjoyed doing those a lot and it did have a special sound, that Moog Sub Fatty. There's something with the oscillators and the filter that really does set it above all the other analog synthesizers. It's got that trademark, <laughs> fabulous Moog sound, but an analog monosynth, not really for me, guys. No, that's not my thing, but now I've sold it on to someone that appreciates it more than I do. The Arturia Key Lab, remember the MIDI controller? That one's gone as well. I've sold that on, but I have a license for the software still. So I'd like to do some videos about the, what do they call it? The key um, analog lab. That's it, the analog lab software. I'd still like to do some videos together with you and show you how that sounds because the software is pretty amazing. But I didn't really like the hardware very much and I've sold that on to another owner now. Another synth I really loved and thought hard about if I should keep it or not is the Nord Lead A1, but I did eventually sell it. I only really need one synthesizer here, and one of the synthesizers that I've, that I've kept sounded pretty much as good, if not better, than the A1, and had a few extra features that I liked as well. I'll explain a bit about that later on. So the Nord Lead has gone for pretty much what I paid for it. In fact, I bought all of this stuff second hand which means I can get it in use it and then sell it for more or less what I paid for it so I'm getting basically free rent to do all this gear and enjoy it myself and cover it on the channel another Nord that came and went during the last few months is my Nord piano and I bought that because I really wanted something where I could enjoy the Nord piano sounds of the Nord piano library and I really wanted to have something where I could play the Nord Rhodes sound. I had an itch to scratch there. I wanted to play some Rhodes and Wurlitzer sounds. But I found that the 88 key format of the Nord piano was a bit big and bulky. It was too heavy. I didn't really need the weighted keys. And I never play the keys at the, at the bottom and the top of the keyboard anyway. So I sold that one on because I found something else that we've got over here in the corner that is a bit, bit more compact and still has those sounds. I've sold all that stuff, but three synths I decided to keep, at least for now, and I think some of them are long-term keepers as well. They're over here in the corner. Let me show you what I decided to keep and why. Okay, so as most of you know by now, this is my Roland JDXI, and this is the instrument that I decided to keep over the Nordlead A1 and over the Electribe. Both the Electribe and this one are geared up to making quick patterns and beats and grooves. But I found myself as a keyboard player, I preferred having a real keyboard on this over the pads that you get on the Electribe. But both of them sound equally good, I think. Or maybe this one's a bit, bit more flexible and a bit better sounding. This is the one I kept. The A1 sounds in a similar league to this one. It does sound fantastic, the Nord Lead A1, but this one has drum kits built in, which the A1 doesn't has, have. This one has uh, the sequencer as well, the four track sequencer, which is bugger off, which is, that was a fly, not you, uh, which is absolutely fabulous for doing quick sketches. I wish the Nord Lead had some kind of sequencer, it doesn't. Uh, of course, this one is a bit toy-like in construction compared to the A1, which is a shame. And I've read some horror stories on the Facebook group and on the forums about the, the robustness of these mini keys. I don't mind them being mini keys so much, but I wish they were a little bit 
tougher. I, I've read reports about them breaking, so I'm getting a little bit worried about using this one. So there's my Roland JDXi, one of my keepers, until Roland release something a little bit better. Let's put that one over there. And let, let me show you, and we've got a, some video equipment over here as well. Let me show you this stand I thought was pretty awesome. This came together with one of the other keyboards I'm going to show you. A fabulous, really thick and robust, yet lightweight red stand. Let's put that one there. I think that probably many of you can figure out what keyboards we have here, actually. I've gone through the list of stuff I've sold, and if you watch the channel, then you can probably figure out what's remaining. But yes, even from the bag here, you get a pretty good clue. Let's reposition the camera. So in here, this is the reason I sold the Nord Piano. I did a video just on the topic, I think. In here we have the Nord Electro 4 then. And this is because I want to have an instrument with good piano sounds, a good action, and I consider this to be a good action, at least a, a good compromise for playing organ sounds and piano sounds, because this thing has really great Hammond B3 organ emulations, the Rhodes, the electromechanical piano sounds, and the acoustic piano sounds in a perfect format. 73 keys is just perfect for me and this beautiful Nord construction, which I just love. This is a fantastic instrument to own. It's the Nord Electro 4, not the most recent one, the Nord Electro 5. I did a video explaining why I prefer the 4 to the 5, so go and watch that if you're curious. But this is the second of my keeper instruments, at least for now. You never know. That's my Nord Electro 4, and we're going to do a lot more stuff on the channel with this. I want to do some Hammond organ stuff with you. I'm a big enthusiast of the... Hammond sound, so we're going to do some Hammond organ stuff as well. Let's put this over there. The final keeper. Can you figure out what it is? Does anybody know? It's over there in that rather magnificent case. Let me show you. So I was extremely pleased when I found this case for sale at a really good price. Let me show you. It's the nicest case I've ever owned, period. It's got like skateboard wheels or rollerblade wheels on the back there, okay? So you can wheel it around like that. See that? And it's a beautifully constructed kit. I'm so chuffed with this case. Let me show you what's inside, if you haven't already figured it out. Woody, what's inside the case? Well, let's have a look. The case, by the way, is a Gator. Don't remember the exact model number. If anybody's curious, then uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll tell you. It really is magnificent and in almost new condition. Yes, inside the case we have, there it is, the, the Yamaha PSRS970. Love it or hate it, this is one of my keeper instruments. Let me get it out of the case and I'll explain to you why. So here is my Arranger keyboard. This is a keeper because I've only scratched the surface of what it can do so far. I haven't really paid it justice on the channel. We've done a couple of videos showing some of the built-in accompaniment patterns, which I hope you've seen. If not, go check them out. But I want to dig into this a little bit more and learn more about the features and the different options and the settings you can use. You can create your own patterns. You can load in third-party accompaniments. And we need to do a lot more of that. And I. I mean, having a keyboard like this is so much fun. This is a really great, fun instrument to play, and I haven't spent enough time with it myself because we've been doing all of the vintage synths on the channel. But we're gonna dig into this one a lot more, believe you me. And the reason I got a case as well is I can see when I quit my day job, perhaps an instrument like this or this one will help me get some kind of income. I can see myself perhaps performing in the future with this keyboard perhaps together with a vocalist or something, which is the reason I got the perfect case for it when the opportunity came. So yeah, this is my pension, perhaps. I'm not quite sure, but I'm not gonna get rid of this one anytime soon. And you're gonna be seeing more of it on the channel as well. 
I've also been buying some guitar stuff. Over here we have a Fender Mustang 2 amplifier that I picked up just yesterday. So I'm looking forward to playing this with my Strat guitar, but also we're going to put the Electro which is over here into the Fender amp, mic it up and see how it sounds. I'm very curious to hear what sounds best, the Electro line outputs perhaps with some amp simulation or a real amplifier, a real guitar amplifier that's mic'd up because as you know the Wurlitzer and the Rhodes were often played through Fender tube amps back in the day. So that's pretty much it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'm very grateful that you're curious about what I've been doing and what I'm up to, which I assume you are if you made it this far in the video. So remember to give me a like if you like the video, consider subscribing if you want to see more of these instruments in action in the near future. Thanks guys, and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio. Woody, yeah.